Welcome to this session on cost reporting. In this session, we're going to be specifically talking about the cost history report. To find this report, head to the navigation menu on the left-hand side of the screen, select Reports, click on Cost, then select History. The report may look the same as when you first log into the dashboard. However, there are two major differences. First, you'll notice that the dimensions and measures are at the top of the screen in this report. Secondly, if you scroll down, you'll see that the information that's available in the visual at the top of the screen is also available in a tabular view. If you are interested in just looking at the numbers as opposed to a graphical interpretation, you can simply scroll down here to see the information in a tabular format. Scrolling back up to the top of the screen, I want to talk a little bit more about the dimensions and measures. What you are currently looking at on your screen is your entire infrastructure. If you apply a filter, you can look at certain subsects of your information. Filters allow you to select from subgroups of your infrastructure. Say, for example, I was interested in looking at a specific account. I could click on the plus sign next to accounts, and then I can select one, two, even three or more accounts, and then hit update. Then I'll be able to see the information for those specific accounts. To remove filters and go back to the default view, simply click the red X next to the filters dropdown, and it will reset your view. Filters allow you to drill down and look at many different variables. If you wanted to look at a specific time interval, if you wanted to see a particular owner of your infrastructure, or if you wanted to map the cost history of a specific line of business, you can do all of this by selecting a filter. You'll notice on the filters dropdown that some of the filters have the letter P next to them. That P stands for perspective. A perspective is a different way to slice and dice your information. The default view of this cost history report is an overview of everything in your infrastructure. If you wanted to narrow your scope and view this information by service or by environment, you would do so using a perspective. One way to think about perspectives is to think of a playlist of music. Often, you can sort your playlist by song, by artist, by album, even by genre. No matter how you sort the list, you're still looking at the same playlist of songs, just organized in different ways. Perspectives allow you to organize the report view that best suits your needs. For example, if you're an engineer and you're only interested in your development or production environment, you can build out an environment section, select production, and then hit update. Now you've configured a perspective view so that the cost history report only looks at your production environment costs. You can sort this report by specific intervals. You can change the view to look at it monthly, weekly, daily, or by hour. You can change the X or Y axis of the report. You can change the category to a specific perspective. So instead of looking at one subset of information, you can actually break it down into multiple parts. Right now, the report is being broken down by service item, so I can see all of the costs represented by each of these different service items in my screen below. If I wanted to, I could change that to be all of my owners, and it will recategorize the cost history report to analyze your costs by owner. You have the option to change the chart type. If you don't like looking at a bar graph, you can change it to an area or to a line graph. You can also project out costs by using the forecasting tool. Under the Options tab, you can forecast out by a number of months of your own choosing. You can also select how to estimate this data by looking at, say, the last three months, six months, or the last year of your environment. Here on the right-hand side of the report, you can see an estimate of your costs per month for the next three months, calculated based on the last 12 months of your environment. Going back to the default view, there are two colors that stand out to me. The red and blue take up a significant amount of real estate in this report. The red represents the upfront fees of your AWS savings plans. These are one-off costs that provide savings over time, but cost a significant amount of money upfront. There isn't much I can do in terms of managing these costs, so perhaps I want to view this data without the upfront costs visible. To remove them from view, click the red box in the legend 
and it removes the AWS savings plan costs from the report. To bring that information back, you simply click back on the red box in the legend. The blue in this bar graph represents my EC2 compute costs. If I hover over them, I can see at a glance how much we're spending each month. You can see that our EC2 compute costs tend to increase month over month. Here, you can see that the EC2 costs remain within the same range for a few months following the purchase of the AWS savings plans in December and January. This makes sense as that upfront investment helps to save on your EC2 compute costs over time. However, three months after purchasing the savings plans, you can see that the EC2 costs start to increase significantly. I should do a little more digging into this to see why our EC2 costs are going up each month. Let's take a different look at this report, and instead of mapping the report by service item, I want to view this report by owner to see if there is one particular person who is driving up our EC2 compute costs. A large percentage of these costs are from assets that have not been allocated. That makes sense as they are attached to the savings plan and haven't been assigned yet. If I want to see which owner is costing us the most out of our allocated assets, I can click the blue box in the legend to hide the unallocated asset costs. I'm going to change this report to a line graph to see who is spending the most month over month. In changing the chart type, it resets the view so I again need to remove the assets not allocated. By hovering over the lines in this chart, I can see the costs associated with each owner. Right off the bat, I can see that Jeff Z is spending the most, followed by Ben, and then Maya. I have a feeling that the increase in EC2 compute costs are related to Jeff's costs as they are trending in the same direction. However, I can't be sure until I look at the service items specifically utilized by Jeff Z. To do this, I'll change my category back to service items. I'm also going to change this back to a bar graph. Now that I'm looking at the category of service items, I want to filter down to specifically which items Jeff Z is using. Under filters, if I click the plus icon next to owner, here I can just search for Jeff, select Jeff Z, and hit update. For the first part of the year, Jeff wasn't really using much. However, starting in June, you can see that Jeff Z is using a significant amount of EC2 compute instances. If I want to see which environment Jeff's EC2 costs are up in, I can change the category of this chart from service item to environment. As I haven't cleared the filter, it will only show me Jeff Z's cost by environment. Here you can see all of Jeff's costs are in the production environment. He might be working on a new application, which would explain the increase in EC2 compute costs. But this is something worth looking into. There are many ways you can slice and dice the information within your cost history report. This marks the end of our session on cost reporting. Thank you so much for joining us.